Welcome to Chief INT's video on why you should always store your dry tea leaves out of the sunlight in order to keep the maximum in flavor, fragrance, and nutrition. So it's kind of contradictory, at least it seems. We want sunlight while the tea leaves are still attached to the tea tree because it's actually the sunlight that provides the energy to make those tea leaves grow. It's a process called photosynthesis, and it's actually pretty much the basis of all life on Earth. So let's take a look at this. This is a ridiculously simplified view of photosynthesis. All right, here is the sun. And yes, that is the sun. What? And you add in a tea tree plus soil plus water plus CO2. And the tea tree will produce for you a tea leaf. Well, this is great, but it only happens when that tea leaf is still attached to the tea tree. Because after the tea leaf has been picked, and it's been processed, and it's been dried, now there's a big shift. The sun is no longer the friend driving the good reactions, now it's the enemy driving the bad reactions. That energy is still going to be coming into the tea leaf, but since everything is dry, it's going to start breaking things down and causing reactions that we don't want. And it's not just tea that undergoes these reactions. It happens to a lot of things that people like. For instance, chocolate and vitamins and supplements and balsamic vinegar and olive oil and coffee. All of these things, just like vampires, absolutely hate the light. So how do we stop this from occurring? Good news is it's really, really easy. All it takes are materials that will shield the sunlight from getting into your tea leaves. For instance, you could use a ceramic vessel like this one. This one actually has our eight shilme in it. You could also use another ceramic vessel like this one. You could use a metal vessel like this one. You could also use a bag that is foil lined like this one. All of these will serve equally well to keeping out the sunlight and preventing those reactions that we don't want. And now comes the fun part. Time to look at the molecules and the chemistry behind these different changes. So I'm drawing two molecules here today. The first one is called linalol, and the second one is called neurolidol. And linalol is actually present in a lot of different naturally occurring substances, and one of them is roses. There is a rose in the Portland Rose Garden called Bolero Variety T. Strangely, it is Variety T. That smells almost like pure linalol. It's my very favorite rose in the entire rose garden. This one, neurolidol, sorry, I forgot some double bonds there. That's the critical part, and the whole point of drawing these molecules are the double bonds. So why do we have double bonds in there? Well, sometimes molecules will form a single bond like this one. This is a carbon and a carbon with one single bond. This is a carbon and a carbon with a double bond. The double bonds actually make them more susceptible to breakdown by oxygen combined with sunlight. How much more susceptible? Well, unfortunately, times 10. So this molecule with two double bonds, it's not 10 plus 10, it's 10 times 10. So this is gonna be 100 times more susceptible to breakdown by light than it would be if there were only single bonds in there. And this molecule, since there are three double bonds, is 10 times 10 times 10, so it is 1,000 times more likely to be broken down. That's a very highly probable event. So let's take a look at what actually happens during this process. So you'll get the hydroxyl radicals, blah, 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 and what you'll end up with is a hydroperoxide. Now this particular intermediate molecule is very, very unstable, and it's gonna break down quite quickly into things we do not want. What are those things? Short chain aldehydes, and short chain ketones. So this is the short chain aldehyde, this is the short chain ketone. When they're short chains, they don't smell very good. They don't taste very good. And you're breaking down nutrients as well. 
So there is really no benefit at all to letting your tea come in contact with light. Want to see a visual proof? We purposely keep one of our Shomei chocolate bar shaped white teas in the light as a visual demonstration to explain to people why it's so important. See, this is kind of brown and dull. This is not old white tea. This is young white tea. It shouldn't look like this. What it should like, look like is the backside, which is this color, nice and green and plush and lush, really good. This is gonna taste very, very nice for a young white tea. Well, this has been exposed to the air, but not the sunlight. This side has been exposed to the sunlight plus the air, and that is a marked difference. So, make sure that you always, always, always Keep your tea away from the light. There is no exception to that rule. And next time that you're enjoying a cup of your fine teas, give thanks to the sunlight for what it does do to the tea leaves when they're growing still attached to the tree. And then give thanks to yourself for preventing that exact same sunlight from oxidizing and breaking down the molecules in the tea that we want so that you can enjoy every single cup to the fullest.